All right, this video is about raising i to integer powers. So basically what we're going to have is um, a couple definitions, and we'll go from there and work some things out. So first we start with i is actually the square root of negative 1. It uh, comes up in a lot of contexts that you would need to take the square root of a negative number. Um, so it's it's been defined to be uh, this new number called i. And what we want to do is square that. So that's i to the first is just the square root of negative 1. So let's square it. So i squared is just going to be equal to um, the square root of negative 1 squared. And when you do that, you just end up with negative 1. So i squared is equal to negative 1. Let's cube it. Um, so now that I know that i squared is negative 1, I can make i cubed into i squared times i to the first. Because remember, if you have the same base, you add the exponents. So i squared times i to the first would just give us i cubed. And then I just figured out that i squared is negative 1, so that's really negative 1 times i, which is just going to be negative i. So i cubed is always going to be equal to negative i. And then if I do i to the fourth, what I can do here is make that i squared times i squared. And I know that i squared is negative 1, so negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. Okay, so what you're going to do right now is memorize those four things. So i to the first is the square root of negative 1, or really just i is a better way to think of it. i squared is negative 1, i cubed is negative i, and i to the fourth is positive 1. So what I'll do is I will summarize those one more time. i to the first is i, i squared is negative 1, i cubed is negative i, and then i to the fourth is positive 1. And we just cycle through those. So let's take a look at some problems. So say I want to do i to the seventh power. Well, ideally, what you do with these problems is you break them into uh, i to the fourth and then i to some other power. So I look at i to the seventh, and I see that is i to the fourth times i cubed. And why do I want i to the fourth? I want i to the fourth because that's one. So if I can get i to the fourth, I know that I'm simplifying things quite a bit. So i to the fourth times i to the third. i to the fourth is one. And I know that i cubed is negative i because I just spent the time memorizing that. So i to the 7th just works out to negative i. Let's take a look at another example. So this will be i to the 23rd. So remember, I'm looking for i to the 4th to be used here. So I'm going to make i to the 23rd into i to the 20th times i cubed, because i to the 20th can be written as i to the 4th to the 5th, and then times i cubed. So a lot of properties of exponents are being used. Um, remember, if you have a exponent raised to an exponent, you end up multiplying the exponents, so that's why i to the 4th raised to the 5th would give me i to the 20th. Um, so this will simplify down, because i to the 4th is 1, so it's 1 to the 5th times negative i, because i cubed is negative i, and this is just negative i. So what's happened here is um, it looks like every time the kind of remainder when you divide the exponent by 4 is 3, so 7 divided by 4 has a remainder of 3, 23 divided by 4 has a remainder of 3, every time the remainder is 3, I'm ending up with i cubed, essentially, and i cubed is negative i. So let's show that that's true, kind of in general. So if I have i to the 4n plus 3, what I can do is I can always break this up into i to the 4n times i cubed, which is the same as i to the 4th to the n times i cubed. And i to the 4th is definitely 1. So now I've got 1 to the n, and i cubed I know is negative i. So if I have i to the 4n plus 3 then I'm just going to get negative i when I simplify it. And actually, let's see if we can do that with a couple of other things. So say I have i to the 6th. Uh, that's going to be i to the 4th times i to the 2nd. And i to the 4th, of course, is 1 times i squared is negative 1. So that's going to be negative 1. And that had a remainder of 2 when I divided it by 4. 6 divided by 4 has a remainder of 2. So let's try i to the 4n plus 2 and see what happens. Well, I'm imagining you can already see what's going to happen. I break it up like I usually do. And then I get this. And then that is just going to end up being i squared, which is, of course, negative 1. So anytime the remainder is 2, the answer is going to be that you're getting just i squared, which is negative 1. So remembering those 4 is going to be crucial. The 4 in the box up there. So say I have i to the 4n plus 1, which is really the only remaining thing. Uh, that's i to the 4th times i to the 1st. So you can tell that I'm just going to get i here. So that's i to the 4th to the n times i. 
and i to the fourth uh, or i to the four n plus one always is going to reduce down just to i. So really the key is finding the remainder when you divide the exponent by 4 and then knowing these four things that are in the top right box. So in summary, we have the four things that you have to memorize and the four things that you have to memorize get used all the time because of these relationships. So anytime the remainder is 1, you're really just dealing with i. Anytime the remainder is 2, you're really dealing with negative 1. If the remainder is 3, you're really dealing with negative i. And if the remainder is 0, if 4 goes into it evenly, well then you're just dealing with 1 and it becomes as simple as possible. So let's look at a couple of examples of how you would use this really quickly. So if I have i to the 63, I'm always looking for i to the 4th to show up, so i to the 60 plus 3. I know i to the 60 is uh, i to the 4 times 15 plus 3. And then that is just going to be i cubed, which I know is negative i. But the remainder was 3, so I already knew that it was going to be negative i, and that's the key thing. Um, let's look again at, say, i to the 100 second, which seems ridiculous, but the remainder when I divide that by 4 is 2, so I know the answer I'm going to get is negative 1. So I can show a little bit of work, but not much. Um, and then let's say that I have something like i to the 17th. Well, the remainder is going to be 1 when I divide by 4, which means that I am just dealing with I. All right, so you're going to memorize the things that are in those boxes, uh, hopefully understand it a little bit, and eventually understand it a lot. But key thing, memorize it, be able to use them, because it makes the problem so much easier. And I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.